good morning y'all on this wet rainy fall morning and we are here in Cumberland County Illinois and if you haven't seen me for a while I've been uh, given some a chance to be a caregiver for a while so Edward's been off on his own but I'm here today thank goodness for the rain and so stay tuned for what we find out uh, and about historical markers in Cumberland County, Illinois. Here we are at the Cumberland County Covered Bridge over the Embarrass River. I guess it's probably pronounced Embarrass. I doubt it's Embarrass. That's what it looks like to me. And we've got a few markers here. Now well, we're going to start here with the road that built the nation. Now we've been driving um, since we got in Cumberland County or a little before um, down the national his, the national road. It's a historic national road. And it, as you can see from the picture here, um, it, it goes all the way from East St. Louis um, into Maryland, Baltimore, um, the historic national road. Sorry, I kind of went down. There it is. And they call that the road that built the nation. So settlers have been moving west since the early 1700s. By 1802, so many farms and towns had been settled in the Ohio Valley that people living in the territory were calling for statehood. But the area was a long way from the eastern cities and towns where most of the nation's business took place. It took weeks of travel over rough wilderness tracks to reach the western outposts that wanted to be part of the nation. A road was what the nation needed. A well-built road to carry its people and goods westward and to link its established cities and towns with the growing settlements on its new frontier. A road would help the nation prosper. Along it, business would grow and news and important communication could be carried to keep the growing nation working together. And um, I'm going to let you pause and read as it goes, but officially it was called the Cumberland Road, but soon became known as the National Pike, the Great Turnpike, and the Old Pike. Um, the name that stuck, however, was the National Road. And to, true to it, this name, it is the only road ever built directly by the federal government. Huh, that's pretty cool. Um, you can continue reading um, about that if you want to pause. I'm going to go over here, down here to the timeline. And I'll just scroll down through there if you want to um, read the timeline of historical events in this area.
it goes all the way down to 2006 when the parking and this um, in interpretive area for the cover Calmelian County uh, cover bridge was completed. And there's a little bit more information about um, this site and the connection of Abraham Lincoln um, to the bridge. So again, just pause and zoom in there and read about that. As you all know, I don't read every word when there's a ton of reading to do. This marker is old to new, bridges over the Embarrass River. Um, as you can see, this is photos. Uh, this is uh, the Jackson Bridge that was constructed. And it talks about that bridge, which was in 1830 um, that the trust was there. And then you have a ferry that operated in the 1860s and 70s. Then there was the Pratt Truss Iron Bridge that went across the river. Looks like it was permanently closed in 1912. And again, after that was intermittent ferry service. Then there was a concrete structure, 1920. But if you look at the picture from, there's the top. If you look at this picture, it was poorly constructed. Um, but that was in 1920. And then it went, it looks like it was all the way until uh, 96 it uh, washed out and then there was just different bridges um, the Jackson um, Trust Bridge I dot working on that That bridge opened, sorry, opened to traffic on October 26, 2000. Um, it cost a lot of money, as you can see there at the bottom. And then we have the Cumberland County Covered Bridge. Um, at the time of completion, it a uh, 200 foot single span Jackson County, or Jackson Covered Bridge reported to be the longest single span timber bridge in the United States with no posted weight limit and it's received several national awards to uh, to date and as you can see uh, there's some really nice pictures of it and of course it's a replica um, of uh, the previous uh, original um, Jackson Trust covered bridge that was built way back here in 1830. So I'm going to go along this timeline so you can see. There's the, oops, sorry, I jerked it up way high. There's the original, okay? And so we're going to go down here and go along this timeline. And there's the replica and again and there's the photos and of course we've got the real thing to show you and here's some photos of the construction of the cover bridge again I'm not uh, I'm not gonna read those and there it is
All right. Um, this one is a little difficult to read. It's uh, not in good condition. But it says, Cumberland County Covered Bridge. Historic Bridge Recreated. 177 years after the original Jackson Covered Bridge was constructed on this site, a new bridge now spans the Embarrassed River. This structure recreates an original covered timber, timber bridge that once stood on this same site as part of the historic Cumberland National Road. Designed to safely carry modern-day vehicles, including tractor-trailer semi-trucks, the new 200-foot single-span structure is reported to be the longest covered timber bridge in the U.S. without a posted restriction. To give an idea of the size and scope of the $2.8 million project, this bridge contains the two abutment foundations, total over 1,000 cubic yards or over 2,000 tons in weight of concrete, enough to construct the foundations for approximately 40 normal 2,000 square foot homes. The heavy timbers for the primary and secondary structural members totaled over 250 board feet, which was 194 tons in weight, of treated and glue laminate, laminated lumber, enough to construct approximately 30 normal 2,000 square foot single story homes. There was approximately 40 tons of steel bolts and plates used to conduct, to conduct the timber structure together. We are in Greenup, Illinois. And this marker here is for Greenup Rails and Trails. It says he was a man of vision. When William C. Greenup co founded this village in 1834, the land around it was wilderness, but as Illinois superintendent of the National Road, Greenup saw tremendous potential in the area ad adjacent to America's highway. The road Greenup helped to construct became a corridor for American culture, politics, and trade. But its glory was short-lived. By 1850, a new road was coming. The national road's claim as the fastest route between the east and west was about to end. For generations, the nation moved by coach, wagon, and water. In the 1850s, America turned its attention to rail. Speed, convenience, and reliability made steam locomotives the preferred means of travel. With the rise of railroads, traffic on the national road dwindled. The road that built a nation suffered from neglect and fell into disrepair. It says the St. Louis, Vandalia, and Terre Haute Railroad reached Greenup in 1868. The Grayville and Mattoon line followed in 1872. It says Henry Ford didn't invent the automobile, but he did make it affordable. By 1919, there were more than 7.5 million vehicles in America. With the growing number of drivers came a national push for better roads. In 1926, the National Road became part of US 40, a transcontinental highway that stretched from Atlantic City, New Jersey to San Francisco, California. By 1940, US 40 had become a well-marked all-weather highway, still used, still in use today. And there's the paving, the preparing the National Road for paving in 1920. Okay. And there you can see the map of um, the National Road and going all the way here from East St. Louis and all, golly, I'm so sorry. You can see it there. <laughs> From East St. Louis 
and all the way up. It's really cool. There's the, uh, the wider view. Of course, that's the Illinois portions. And it says, A Road of Dirt, Rock, and Dreams. In 1806, President Thomas Jefferson signed legislation to provide federal funding for a national road. Surveyed from Cumberland, Maryland to the Mississippi River, the National Road was a highway for pioneers eager to, eager to settle the West. Today, as US 40, the National Road in Illinois spans 164 miles. From Indiana to East St. Louis, you can still see how the ambitions and accomplishment of early Illinois immigrants shaped our communities. You'll find their influence in our art and architecture, our industry and agriculture, and in our way of life. Enjoy your time on the road. And this is the site of the Greenup Township Carnegie Library, built in 1904. Currently, the Cumberland County Military Museum. site of Barber Inn, 1831, on Old National Trail. Town established in 1836 by W.G. Greenup. Erected by citizens of Greenup in 1915. Yeah, hard to read. The Abraham Lincoln Well, 21-year-old Abraham Lincoln, his father Thomas, and his stepmother Sarah Bush Lincoln along with various relatives, passed through here while traveling the Palestine Road in 1830. A broken wagon forced the family to stop, perhaps for several days, while necessary repairs could be made. It was at this time that Abraham helped dig this well, which has been preserved today. The well is 12 feet deep and contains approximately 4 feet of water. The original capstone can be seen adjacent to the well. The well housing was built to commemorate the Lincoln's first passage through this area before settling at Goosenest Prairie, now Lincoln Log Cabin State Park, located nine miles north of here. And there's the, kind of the map. And then star number one is the Vincennes River crossing. And Star number two is the Palestine Land Office on Palestine Road. Star number three, Abraham Lincoln Well. Star number four, Gooseness Prairie, Lincoln Log Cabin State Park. And number five, burial site of Lincoln's father, Thomas, and stepmother, Sarah Bush. This is where the site of the first hotel in Greenup was built in the 1830s. So what did you think of Cumberland County, Illinois historical markers? You know, some people think that this part of the country is still part of Southern Illinois. You'll find others that'll say it's Central Illinois. But the history is fabulous either way. So stay tuned for our next episode of historical markers in southern Illinois or wherever we're at. <laughs>